know, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Happy Resurrection Day. Jesus has risen from the grave. Make sure my mic is on. Jesus has risen from the grave. Yes, he has. He has risen from the grave. And that means that shame and sin have no power over us. Jesus has risen from the grave. Happy Easter. Happy Resurrection Day. Yes, happy Resurrection Day. God bless. Well, we we um will soon be in our in our new church home, and uh, we had pushed for it to be today, but unfortunately it's not. But that's okay. We're still gonna praise God right here, because you know the church is inside of us. The Holy Spirit is on the inside of us, so it doesn't take a building to praise the Lord. So we are excited, and yes, we are excited about the new building that we will be um, moving into um, shortly. And uh, in St. Paul, Minnesota, so we are excited about that. And but we can praise the Lord anywhere, anywhere. We can praise the Lord anytime, because like I said, the church is inside of us. Yes, the church is inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. And so I want to uh, start because I have a really good message here today, and um, I want to uh, pray before I go into uh, before I go into the service. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I ask you, Lord God, to speak through me. Let none of it be me, but let it be all about you, Father God, that you get the glory, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for this Resurrection Sunday, Father God. We thank you, Jesus, that we are here. In Jesus' bless his name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. So I'm going to be reading out of the book of Matthew this morning. And um, also I'll be turning to Corinthians as well, but I'm going to start in Matthews. I'm going to start in, in Matthews right now. And it's going to be in chapter 28, chapter 8, or chapter 28, verse 5. And, um, and it says, Then the angel spoke to the woman, don't be, don't be frightened, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he isn't here. For he has come back to life again, just as he had just as he said he would. I'm getting excited. Now I'm going too fast with the reading. Let me start again. Then the angel spoke to the woman. Don't be frightened, he said. I know you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified, but he isn't here, for he has come back to life again, just as he said he would. Come in. Come in and see where his body was laying. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jesus. And we continue on to read. The woman ran... From the tomb, badly frightened. Okay, it says, see, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, let me back up. Come in and see. Thank you, Jesus. Come in and see where his body was laying. And now go quickly and tell the disciples that he has risen from the dead and that he is going to Galilee to meet them there. That That is the message for to them. The woman ran from the tomb, badly frightened, but also filled with joy and rushed to fill for us to find the disciples to give them the angel's message. And as they were running, suddenly Jesus was there in front of them. Good morning, he said. And they fell to the ground before him, holding his, his feet and worshiping him. Then Jesus said to them, don't be frightened. Go tell the brothers to leave at once for Galilee to meet me there. Now, can you imagine how they felt inside, seeing Jesus right there in front of them. Can you imagine how they felt? I mean, they see Jesus right there, right? He's right there. And remember, the tomb was empty. He was right in front of them. He said, don't be frightened. But that was a little too late because they were like startled. They seen him right there. Um, the angel had told him, had spoke to him and said, you know, that, you know, that, that, that he had, re he's, he's gone. He's not in the tomb anymore. They seen that. Then all of a sudden, bow, there he is. Could you imagine the look in their eyes, but still felt the, still felt joy to see Jesus right in front of them. The savior who was crucified on the cross. They just, they seen him crucified, crucified on the cross with their eyes, with their own eyes. But then now they're staring at him right in front of their face. He had said he was going to rise from the dead and he did exactly just that. Can you imagine the feeling inside? And then they, 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 they kneel down and they begin to worship Jesus' feet. And they begin to, they begin to worship him and begin to just cry, I'm sure. And just, can you imagine the feeling of how they felt? Can you imagine that? 
I mean, the last time they seen him, he was dead and now he stood right in front of them. I mean, everybody thought it was over, done and finished. No more. The tomb was being guarded by the guards just in case he came out or to stop him from coming out. And they, and they didn't, and they, he had told them that he was going to rise from the dead and they didn't want anyone to steal the body to make it look like he had did some kind of, they, you know, disappear to make the body disappear from them. As you recall in, uh, chapter 28, uh, chapter 20, ch chapter 20, and we read on to chapter 28 through 11. And it says, as the woman, as the woman where, as the women were on their way into the city, some of the temple police who had been guarding the tomb went to the chief priests and told them what had happened. A meeting of all the Jewish leaders was called, and it was decided to bribe the police to say they had all been asleep when Jesus' disciples came during the night and stole his body. See, now they're going to tell a lie because they can't even believe it. They don't even know what happened, so let's, they're going to start lying and telling a lie and saying that these disciples came and got the body and took it because they can't even explain what happened. They don't even know. Now, it goes on to read, if the governor hears about it, the council promised, we'll stand up for you and everything will be all right. So the police accepted the bribe and said what they said what they would tell would, would said and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews and is still believed to them to this day. Now, as you recall, you remember, they were guarding the tomb. They were guarding it. No one could get in. No one could get out. They were guarding it. Jesus was killed. That was on Saturday. Or he was killed on, on Friday. And then they were guarding the tomb on Saturday, which would be yesterday. They were guarding the tomb on the Sabbath day. Guarding it. No one could get in. No one could get out. Now, where did the body go? They don't know. But I know that they did decide to tell a lie. So they're going to tell a lie. As you recall in Matthew 27, 62, it says, The next day, at the close of the first day of the Passover ceremony, the chief priests and the Pharisees went to Pilate and told him, Sir, that liar once said, After three days, I will come back to life again. So we requested an order from the sealing of the tomb until the third day to prevent his disciples from coming and stealing his body. They didn't believe that Jesus was even coming back. First off, they thought automatically that the disciples was going to steal the body. He's not going to rise from the dead. They didn't believe that. So they said that they would, they would seal the tomb and prevent the disciples from stealing the body. And then telling everyone to come back to life. And then they would, they, the disciples would tell him, he came back to life. They, they, they believed that the disciples would steal the body and tell everybody he came back to life. If that happened, they'll be worse off than they were before because then everybody would believe, you know, that Jesus did rise from the dead and that he is who he says he is. So they said, we had to seal the tomb. I'm going backwards to what they said yesterday, that which would be, which be on Saturday, that that is what they had did. And then, uh, use, uh, they you okay, so then they used, your own tempo police, Pilate told them, he said, use your own tempo police. They can guard it safely enough. He felt like they would guard it safely enough. So they sealed the, the stone and posted guards to protect it from intrusion. They did everything they could. They, they guarded it. They protected it. Everything. They did everything they could do. But now, early on Sunday morning, as the new day was drawing, Mary Magdalene, and, and the other Mary went out to the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and rolled aside the stone and sat on it. His face was shone like lightning and his clothing was brilliant white. The guards shook with fear when they saw him and fell into a dead faint. Then the angel stood. Then the angel stood and that's when he told the woman, do not be frightened. And she said, I know you are looking, and he said, I know you are looking for Jesus. And so again, can you imagine how she felt when she saw Jesus? I mean, all of this took place. They had the tomb. The tomb was 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 guarded. The tomb, the stone was rolled back. I mean, they no one could get in there. And, and and you know what? To be honest, now all of a sudden, everything that they even said and done and said about Jesus is all a lie. Now they now they're just like, that's why they tell them a lie. Because they, they said that Jesus wasn't, wasn't who he said he was. But now his body's gone. 
what happened? They don't even know. The guards were there. Okay, we gonna, they going to tell a lie and say that this is what happened. But deep down inside, they're frightened. They are frightened because they know Jesus is who we say he is now. Now, uh, Matthew 28, 16 says, then the, set, then the 11 disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had said they would find him. There they met him and worshipped him. But some of them weren't sure he was, it was really even Jesus. Still, they wasn't even sure that it was really even him. So even some of, the, some of the disciples that went to go where Jesus was at, they still were questioning that he wasn't even him. And they seen that the, that the tomb was secured and no one could get you see what i'm saying like sometimes the enemy will creep in sometime and make you not even believe what even i mean they seen it with their own eyes there he is and now they still he told the disciples reading on he told the disciples i have been given all authority in heaven and earth therefore go and make disciples in all the nation baptizing them in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit and then teach these disciples to obey all the commandments all the commands I have given you. And be sure of this, that I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus is alive. That is exactly what he was telling them. And he told them to go and baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That they too may, be, may get out and witness the word of God. That is us. That means that no longer, because Jesus died on the cross, that means no longer does sin and shame have any, any kind of barrier on us. That means that we are free. We are free from sin and we are free from shame. Do you know how sin, sin, how shame can make you hell bound? Do you know how sin, how, how sin can make you feel like a lot of times sin can make you feel so corrupted and so bad and like you just a horrible scum to the earth. The enemy will make you feel this way. But Jesus is alive. So then he died on the cross for our sins. That means that sin shall have no dominion over you at all. For ye are not under the law, but under grace. We are under grace in the name of Jesus. They could not stop what God was doing. And still to this day, they could not stop what God was doing. You see, because they tried to stop it. They thought that if they killed Jesus, that it would be the end of it. They felt like if they sealed the tomb and held him in there and that they, they would know, that even his disciples couldn't get him out of there. So they felt like it was over. They didn't believe in the power of God, that God was going to rise Jesus from the dead, his son, and then make him come alive, rise from the grave. They didn't believe this. And then they told a lie after the fact. I'm going to go over to Corinthians uh, 2. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. It says, we boldly say what we believe, trusting God to care for us, just as Psalm writer did when he said, I believe and therefore I speak. We know that, we know that the same God who brought Lord Jesus back to, to death, back from death, will also bring us back to, to life again with Jesus and present us to him along with you. So then when Paul spoke in this, in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, when Paul was speaking, Paul was saying that we boldly say what we believe. So we boldly are speaking. We know that Jesus has risen from the dead. We know that we are in Christ Jesus. We know those that have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior. So we boldly speak what we believe. And we know that God is caring for us. So we don't be afraid to speak. Glory be to God that God and Jesus is alive. And that, G and that God rose from the dead. And that he sits next to the Father. We boldly go out and we speak this. And we believe. Therefore I speak. We know that the same God who brought Lord Jesus back from the dead will also bring us back to life again with Jesus. So when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, you're coming back from the dead. That means that you are no longer dead to the sin, that you are, you are free. I'm not talking about free to sin, but you're free from death. That means you have eternal life. You have eternal life. That means that even though you may die in this natural body, this flesh, you may die in this physical body. But then you will take on a heavenly body once you go to heaven. And so we are, we, we are alive because Jesus died for our sins. They could not even stop him. They couldn't, they couldn't even stop him from, from coming back from the grave. They thought that they had it all done when they, when they crucified him on the cross. But little did they know that, G, that God had a plan. See, God has a plan for our life, but little does the enemy know that God is going to get that plan done regardless, but it also takes us to be a, a participant of that plan, a participant of his will. God wants to do something in your life, 
And the enemy wants to stand at your tomb. He wants to stop you from coming up out of that death. He wants to stop you. He wants to make you stay in the tomb. But Jesus is here to say that you can come out of that death. You can be resurrected today. You can be. You can turn your life over to God today. You don't no longer have to live in sin. You can come out of that sin. And you don't have to live in shame anymore. They couldn't even explain. And that's how people will be. They won't even recognize you. They won't even know what happened to you. That's what they'll be questioning. Who are you? I don't even know who you are. Do I even believe who you are when you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior? Because you take on new. All things are new. The Bible says that all things are new. We don't go back to the old ways, but we, we die from that and we renew our mind. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. And so then, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, all these, all these new things are from God who brought us back to himself through through what Jesus Christ did. And God has given us the privilege of, of urging everyone to come into his favor and to be reconciled with him. He's given you that. He's given you that gift, that gift to come and be reconciled with him. You don't have to live in sin. You don't have to, you don't have to be uh, moved and bruised or whatever you call it by the enemy. The enemy right now is controlling you if you haven't come to Jesus. If you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, the enemy is moving you around. He's doing, he's controlling your life. He wants you because he knows where he's going. So he wants to take you exactly where he is down into the pit. So he's trying to get as many as people that he can take to go with him. Will you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today? The enemy stands outside your tomb, your grave. That means your sin, the sin that you live in right now, hoping you don't come out, but Jesus will breathe life inside of you. And suddenly you will, you will rise from the dead, from your sinful life. So sin and shame can no longer stop you. Jesus rose from the grave so that he died and he died for our sins so that we would be resurrected with him on the day of when God comes back for his people. Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior today? It would be a beautiful day to accept him. As your Lord and Savior today. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Do you want Jesus? I mean, they tried to keep him in the grave. They thought that they was going to keep him up in there. They thought that they could not make it, thought that he would not come out. But he did. Now, God is asking you, will you come out? Will you come from out of your sins? Will you come from what are you are doing? God is here and he's asking you. In the name of Jesus, to accept the Holy Spirit inside of you. See, when God, when we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, we take on him. That means that he, his will, we live in his will. God gave us all a God-given purpose. We have a purpose. God gave us a purpose. But if we spend our time on, on earth just doing what we want to do, God says that I came to give you life and give you more abundantly. Will you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today? On this day, today. The day that Jesus rose from the dead. Will you rise from what you are in? Will you rise from the sin that you are in? Will you allow the enemy or will you allow the enemy to keep you bound into your shame, your guilt? Aren't you tired of living in that shame and that guilt? Every day wondering what's going to happen. What's the next move? Trying to look for the next high or the next this or the next that. God is saying today, come to me. I have all that you need, everything that you need. Lean not on your own understanding, but lean on his. Trust in his way and he will direct your path. He will direct your path. And when he directs that path, it's a beautiful path and you have everlasting life. The enemy can't give you everlasting life. He cannot give you everlasting life. He could not give you everlasting life. In the name of Jesus, will you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today? Will you accept him as your Lord and Savior? God is waiting. God is wanting to know, will you accept him as your Lord and Savior? If you want to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, today is a beautiful day to do it. Jesus rose from the dead today, Sunday. This was the day that he rose from the, from the grave and he died on the cross on Friday. This whole weekend, this whole week has been nothing but a blessed week. 
Thank you, Jesus. And it can be more of a blessed week, a more of a blessed life for you. God has already, he's already showed you that he loves you. He's already showed you that he cared. He's been taking care of you even when you were in your own, in your own way. When you were doing your own things, Jesus has been there for you. And now he's asking you, do you want eternal life? Do you want eternal life today? What a beautiful day that it would be to give your life to the Lord today. He rose from the grave. The enemy, like I said, is on the outside hoping you don't come out. He's got the guards. He's got the demons blocking you from coming out. He doesn't want you to come out. He wants you to stay inside of there. He's been guarding it the whole time, your whole life. Give your life to God and come out of that tomb like Lazarus did when Jesus said, come, come out. He told Lazarus to come out of that grave and walk out. That's what Jesus is asking you today, to come out from that grave and be into eternal. Where when, you, when, you, when you slip into the, the sleep, the deep sleep, as we call it, then you can wake up and you'll be in heaven. But if you're living in, in the sin, then there's no, there's no eternal home for that. There's no eternal home. Eternal home would be damnation. And the enemy, he wants to take as many people. He wants to ruin your life, destroy it, so that you don't never live your God-given purpose. So you be confused. The author of confusion, the author that confused, com the author that is an author of lies and everything else tells you everything. Lies. Complete lies. So will you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior today? If you do, if you if you want to. Maybe you're lukewarm. Maybe you haven't been living for God. But you can repeat this prayer after me. And if you will accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me for my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Be the Lord of my life. Create in me a clean heart and a right spirit within me. Renew my mind and heal me from the hurts of the past. I love you, Lord, and I need you. Cover me with your precious and holy blood, as well as my family and my friends. Thank you, Lord, for everything you've done in my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you've repeated that prayer, you have just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want you to get into a Bible-believing church and praise God if you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior on Easter month, on Easter, on Easter morning, on Easter morning, that is a blessing because Jesus died for our sins so that we can have that. We don't have to worry about living in a, in a you know what I'm saying? We don't have to worry about our, our sin and our shame and all that stuff keeping us bound and where we're in guilt and we're walking around and feeling hopeless. God gave us hope. We have hope. God gave us hope. We have hope in Jesus. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That is right. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And we can come boldly before the, to the cross and ask God, our Father, our Father, thank you, Jesus. We can come boldly. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. So I'm going to close. It didn't, it, it wasn't a long service, but we don't need a long service because if people gave their life to the Lord, that is right there. That's the service right there. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for today. Thank you for this Easter. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this word today. We thank you, Heavenly Father. You, we are blessed beyond what we could ever imagine in the name of Jesus. You have given us so much safely protected us with your with your blood our refuge healed us when we were sick our doctor got us out of situations that we should have been overtaken it should have overtook us father god you are our lawyer we thank you father god you have been our lawyer you died for our sins and you rose from the grave not even death could stop you you came to the earth as a man to set everything in motion to show us how to live holy and to go out and save souls. 
as you said in your word, therefore go and make disciples in all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and then teach them, these new disciples, to obey all the commands I have given you. You have the Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. You have given us the authority to put the enemy un in his place, under our feet. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Heavenly Father. Glory be to God. We thank you, Jesus. You are everything. You are mighty and powerful. Lord of lords and King of kings over all creations. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. God bless you. Have a beautiful, beautiful Easter, Easter afternoon, Easter morning. Have a beautiful week. God bless you. I will be back on, two, on Thursday, excuse me, on Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Have a beautiful evening. God bless you and take